Hey everybody, welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Jeremy. I'm Joey. And we're talking about music, as we like to do, Zick, on this podcast. Nice, uh, dude. <laughs> man, I'm fucking clever as shit, and everyone knows it. This oh, week, man. we are talking about the album Life as a Dog by K-Flay, released in 2014. We listened to it last week, and we're going to give you our thoughts on it, because that's that's literally this podcast. Yeah. I don't know why you started with this episode if you didn't already know that. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what we do. I don't know. Maybe they just like K-Flay. Maybe that's true. Maybe, maybe they were searching, sh- like they just searched for this album on YouTube or Spotify or something, and somehow we popped up before the actual songs. <laughs> Heavy doubt, <laughs> but you know, maybe maybe one of our followers on social media that are pity follows saw and they're like, "Hey, I like that album." Let's yeah, there we go. So that's what we're doing. If you didn't know, I don't, I don't know what else. Maybe we should call that out at the beginning of every episode. Yeah. But uh, we're not gonna. <laughs> that's that's just not us to be that consistent. Exactly. <laughs> that's our brand. But yeah, it's a fun like alternative hip hop kind of album. A female artist, which there's not a whole lot of female hip hop going on. Uh, at least not in this vein that I'm aware yeah. of. Uh, of course, there's there's a lot of modern female hip hop that is not like. Nothing like this. I wouldn't even honestly consider it hip hop, but that's that's a discussion for next <laughs> time. Uh, so yeah, this this album I I picked it because it just I don't know I wanted to get away from the indie pop rock stuff, but this is still kind of also indie pop rock in in some ways in some aspects. But uh, I don't know. I just kind of threw a dart. It felt right. I I really like this album. I didn't hear this album first from her. her. I heard of K Flay. Back in like 2016, 2017, whenever she released the Crush Me EP for her soon to be upcoming album that is Everywhere Somewhere, which came out in 2017, 2018 ish, I think. Regardless, this was not the first I heard her. I kind of backed up after I heard uh, her newer stuff and then went into Life as a Dog. And this is my favorite album by her. Uh, so that's, that's why this album. It's, it's fun. I've seen her a couple times live. I really enjoy it. I want to see her more. Oh, dang. But uh, she's, she's a pretty good performer. Well, she's there you pretty, go. Pretty cool, pretty cool cat. <laughs> see, <laughs> that's okay. I, I've never heard of her until yeah. this, really, until you said something yeah, about her. So but. it's it's weird as hell. I saw her for the first time in Indianapolis in a very, very small venue, like smaller than any venue that I've been in. Honestly, like the smallest venue I've, I've ever been in was in Indianapolis. It's called the hi-fi shout out to them, I guess. Uh, and I mentioned, I think I mentioned, uh, when we were talking about the two flu album that she had die Jack open. So die Jack was featured on it on one of those two blue songs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I saw die Jack and K flay in this very small venue. And like the following year, she was on tour with imagine dragons. And it's just like, what the fuck? Ha- like, <laughs> I, it, it's crazy because this album had been out for a while. Like, yeah. she wasn't new to music. I, I guess Crush Me and and Everywhere Somewhere kind of blew her up in that aspect. But, like, it, it's insane that within a year, I saw her at the smallest possible venue. <laughs> and then the following year, she's, like, doing arena tours with Imagine Dragons. And I'm just like, it's fucking crazy. Good for you. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of crazy because I would have after listening to this album, I would have thought that like this would have gotten her like yeah. radio play or like m- more. She well- got a whole lot for her, her second album. Uh, she, uh, she had a huge single called blood in the cut, which you've probably heard just in passing. Yeah. But, but didn't really know. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's enough about her for, <laughs> for now. I mean, this whole album's about her. Yeah. So we'll be talking about it, but, but now uh, we get to talk about how we feel about her. album. <laughs> it's about us. Yeah. And, and the album art, I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's pretty simple. It's got some, like, an orange background with some blue kind of, like, audio spiky, like, sound wave kind of things going on uh, in the corner of it. It says, Life is a Dog, and kind of a faded font. Mm-hmm. And in the center of it, it says K-Flay, and it has a couple symbols. The symbols actually Did differ. I, I don't know. So on I'm looking at Genius <laughs> right now. And the cover art that they have for Genius shows a triangle, a circle, a square, and a rectangle. What? But the cover on YouTube Music shows an asterisk, a crescent moon, a bomb with a smiley face, and a candle. See, so the, I'm not sure what that's about. 
So you said the one on Genius had the shapes? Yeah. I'm on Genius, and it has the asterisk, the crescent moving the bomb, and the... Oh, you like, know what? I bet you one of them's a special edition cover, like, for the the one with the remixes at the end. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. But uh, that's not super relevant, because I don't know what they mean, and I have no <laughs> input on, on to what they can mean, or why they're there. Maybe you should have done some research before. Nah, but fine. I didn't. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, Joey, everyone I know has has told me what they like and don't like about this podcast. That's so now true. I'll tell you. So now I, I want you to tell me well, how you feel about the first track. Okay. So this guitar tone that comes in, I like, to, I like to be the clear, first track. Sorry. I, I don't want to cut you off. Uh, to be uh, clear, the first uh, track is titled Everyone I Know. Oh, yeah. You, you, I, I, you I made a segue and I didn't, I didn't explicitly call it out. So I had to like back up and say, wait a minute. Let me call it out. We're talking about the first track. Everyone, Everyone I, know. I Know. Go yes. on. Yes. Okay, so I like I like this album. I'm not good. like super in love with it, but sure. I I like it. And there's a few songs on here that I do like really like. So okay, okay. How many? Give me give me a ballpark guess. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the guessing game this week. <laughs> I'd say three that I like really like. Okay. So, but this first one, while I do like it, it is not one of those three. But I like that guitar tone coming in. It's like the the two B kind of yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to describe a guitar tone like that. I guess I'm just <laughs> not a colorful speaker, but yeah. uh, it's just a nice little guitar line that comes in. I mean, parts of the song kind of I don't know. Like I'm trying to describe how it like waves. I don't know. Parts are like slower and then it picks up and then back and back and back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off my game. Yeah, not no. That, not that I'm ever on my game. Like, what was <laughs> that? But uh, yeah, it, it kind of is a nice like ebb and flow to yeah. it. Yeah, there we go. See, if I could just think of the words that you say before <laughs> you say them, then I say them. Then maybe I'll look like the smart guy for once. Well, I assure you, I do not look like the smart guy. <laughs> but yeah, so I like it. I, I on this album, I actually do relate a lot with some of the lyrical themes. If not okay. like now. I did at one point in my life. Sure. So, so that's kind of where it like made its in with me, I guess more yeah, than I, some of the lyrics than anything. I think it's kind of a strange thing in that, uh, I don't necessarily relate to a whole lot of lyrical content on this album for reasons that we'll get into, but it definitely has a feeling of like, man, this would have been something that I would have listened to when I was, around the time that this album came out. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's capturing a very specific moment in time, I think. And even like, obviously I've listened to it for a few years at this point. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know. It, it just feels like it's not really nostalgic necessarily for that time and age. I know we talk about that a lot, but it, it like, I think everyone can see some value in it as being like, Oh yeah. I remember a time in my life when I felt like that kind of a thing. Yeah. And like with this song, I mean, to me, it kind of, the vibe that I was getting, I kind of get the vibe it's written about like, like, I don't know, there's a lot of things on here that seem to relate with the stereotypical like millennial, like Generation Y type yeah. person, which I mean, I guess she is. I don't know how old she was whenever this came out, but yeah, I think am she's I old, around that, our age, but maybe like the general app older. Like, just the general apathy and kind of the self-destructive life's, like, way of dealing with some of the issues. And the, there's certain, like, in this song, it kind of makes me think of somebody having, like, the quarter-life crisis. Like, you're in your mid-20s or something. Yeah. Having, like, a panic attack because you're like, well, where's my, where's my life going? And, like, what's happening? And just kind of how people stereotypically in the current generation tend to deal with that in a not so great way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but that's at, kind at of... the same time, it's kind of like interesting. The way she has laid this song out is that there are uh, three, ver three verses, I think. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I could look at it. I'm not gonna, but uh, uh, each verse is split into two sections, essentially where she sings or raps in three line sections. And the first section in each verse is 
generally commenting on how people are feeling or acting and it's usually in a negative way right like you said mm -hmm. this this feeling of apathy or or depression kind of a thing and then the second section of each verse is her kind of providing comfort to them to respond for that yeah and the, the i don't know the com the comforting sections as i've labeled them kind of like resonate with me and it 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 gives me the feeling she's the kind of person that wants to help others despite having her own issues yeah kind of a thing and that's something that just like i don't know i feel like i relate to that in a very deep way because that, that's just me yeah i i can definitely see that i can see it more in certain other songs but now that yeah. you pointed it out i can see it in this song as well yeah so like for example the first verse she says everyone i know is sad smiling in a bad way high off stolen meds and then by the end of that verse she says call my phone if you're feeling lonely because i'm not anyone's one and only i'm dead so she's like yeah like i feel you like i'm feeling shitty too but i want to help you yeah. give, me, give me a ring kind of a thing well good on you cave lay yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's actually who she is, or if that was just me kind of projecting. But uh, I mean, that seems that seems pretty right. Like, and not to keep tying this back to like millennials and stuff, but that seems to be, I don't know, the typical rhetoric. Not that I believe in generations at all. Like, I think all that <laughs> whole thing is bullshit. But kind of the stereotypical thing yeah. is like uh, millennials are so. Of, like objected to like actually getting in the way of other people or like they'll definitely put other people's at least mental health before their own a lot of right. times at even sometimes at the risk of their own mental health yeah and for sure just go out of their way bend over backwards just to be like hey let's all like not necessarily out of like a dislike for confrontation but just like general concern for other people's well-being i guess yeah, yeah, for sure. And and one of the other like lyrics that stood out to me in this song before we go on, she she says, "Write me back." Like in another one of those comfort sections, the the let, latter half of the verses, she says, "Write me back if you're feeling empty." I like the rules. I don't like pretending I'm bad because I'm not bad, which kind of gives you this image that she's like trying to fit in with people by by playing a character, but that's not really who she is, and she wants to make that clear. Like, hey, like, yeah. I know I play it up when we're in public or when we're in a group setting kind of a thing, but genuinely, like, I'm not that kind of person. I, I generally follow the rules, which doesn't necessarily line up with her actions in the rest of the album, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, peer pressure, it's a thing. <laughs> it is, and sometimes <laughs> it makes you fade. Yeah, sometimes it definitely makes you fade. And Out of who you really sometimes are. Yeah, and sometimes it makes people in a situation where they create track number two on this album, titled Make Me Fade. Yeah, I think that actually happened in a very specific circumstance in K-Flo's <laughs> life around the time that this album created, because she created the second track on this album called Make Me Fade. <laughs> we oh. can't confirm that that exact situation has happened at least once. <laughs> at least once. Track two, Make Me Fade. Man... I, I'm going to guess this is one of the three songs that you really like. You know what? This is. And so there's a, it almost isn't because <laughs> I like the intro so much yeah. that I wish that melody stayed more present throughout the whole song. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it comes back it does. underneath some stuff throughout but, the song. But, but yeah. I just like it so much. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I love the song musically as well. Like, it, it has that kind of cool, like, plucky, like, almost water droplet sounding intro thing. Yeah. And then it, like, the the beat comes in with a bass line, and it's just... Mm. The, the bass, for the most part, mirrors the kick, but it also kind of fills in at the end of each measure or whatever. It's just like, I don't know, this song wraps up K. Flay's writing style for this album, I think, very well, and that it, it starts off simple and elegant, and it kind of grows... Yeah. But it never really, like, it, it's still simple. There's just a lot of different ways it's simple. And that, that sounds kind of offensive, but she does it in a very good way. And I think it suits the lyrics. It's, it suits her style very well, where, where there's a lot of simple melodies happening or a lot of simple, like, rhythm and stuff. But she does it in a very cool way and adds a lot of effects and stuff on top of it over time. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it really is just a version of what I like about other music so much just done in this 
genre, like the layering where you take a simple idea and you can just, okay, you can add some stuff in there. And then by the end, you're ending up with something bigger and you're just there before you know it. But like, yeah. I do like the simplicity on a, a lot of songs. Cause so, some songs on this album get, are like intense, rightfully so they mean to be kind yeah. of intense with the music, but there's, she does simple really well. Like I get what you're saying. And I, I think that's a pretty good compliment because if you can do simple well, like that, I I think that means a lot because anybody can just take a bunch of stuff and eventually make something that sounds cool or at least will make people want to listen to it because it's right. like oh it's so complex it has so much going on yeah yeah but then if you just if you can just keep it simple and well executed I think that I don't know I appreciate that more than really complex stuff i guess yeah and, and and again i think she does it very well and i think it complements her songwriting style and like her her lyrics and, and just kind of her vibe yeah i know i know it's kind of a, a youngster thing i've been saying vibe a whole lot lately but like <laughs> i don't know it, it, it feels like it fits but uh, i mean life yeah. is just a vibe it is man life is just, just a dog as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know this song i really enjoy like i said i Every time I hear this song, it kind of takes me back to seeing it live. And it, it, it's just a fun experience for me. Like, I really love seeing the song live. I've seen her two or three times live. And mm-hmm. the song is just a standout performance, I think, in my opinion. It's just kind of fun to, to be in a crowd of people jamming to this one. And this, like, that's, I don't know, this song, like, it gets dark just because it makes me think of people that I've personally known, like, lyric-wise. Yeah. Like, this song, I'm guessing it's about addiction. Like, sure. that's what I think it's about. Just with lines where she's talking about, yeah, shaking from my temples to my ankles, sunny, but I need another raincoat, waiting by a payphone. Finally, I coughed up some awful information. Like, it just makes me think of somebody who's just, like, got the shakes yeah, like they're out there in the sun, getting like in the sun, but you're still just like you're just extremely cold. It makes me think of people that I've known who were on like heroin and stuff, trying like trying to get off of it, and not saying that I think this is related to alcohol. Right. It, I could be wrong, but it just yeah. Makes no, me... I mean the the first it, it's kind of both. So yeah. this I think this is kind of a clever track in that it introduces two separate themes in my mind that become combined. Mm -hmm. And those themes are a, like you said, addiction with alcohol and or drugs and B she's also painting this in kind of a relationship standpoint. And Mm -hmm. she's done this in a couple of tracks in her career where she uses this addiction to simultaneously refer to like the, the obvious, the, the physical drugs and alcohol, but also an addiction to a person being in love with someone. She like at the end of the first verse, she says, I hate my own shit, but I love yours, which obviously could mean like your own supplies kind of getting weak. You're building up a tolerance, but you want some, something yeah. new and fresh. But at the end of the chorus, she, she sings, you make me fade. I'm brighter when you make me fade. And she yeah. talks about like, just like missing someone essentially. Like I'm she for the second pre-chorus i guess she says waiting for the call to come who does who could say it was easy sad about the bad i've done on my grave please believe me static on the line i hear it all the time but i'm quiet when you make me fade which kind of leads into the the big chorus and then the whole bridge or just is just like her talking about how she's growing separate from someone but she but again she's painting it in this way where the song sounds like it's about addiction and that's something that the album talks about. And I, I just, I just, I don't know. I think it's cool because in the next couple tracks, it'll kind of blend that literal addiction with drugs and alcohol with relationships. And it, it, it also sets the precedent, I think of explaining who she is at this point in the album where mm-hmm. she has that kind of addictive tendency, which maybe gets her into some shit in a couple tracks. Maybe. Until I know the answer, I know that I can't sleep until I find out. <laughs> well, well, you're going to have to wake the fuck up. Wait, you said you can't sleep. I, I can't, was, can't sleep. 
you're going to have to stay awake <laughs> like you want to do because track three is can't sleep. <laughs> uh, Almost. So close. <laughs> is this one of the other songs you really like? You know, this actually is not. Damn it. <laughs> but I I mean, like, it's a good song. It's, yeah. it's just this song. Okay. So before we even talk about anything else, this song, it is so familiar to me. <laughs> so very familiar to me but i don't i can't put my finger on it like she i don't know if it's she sounds like somebody or if i've like maybe i have heard songs by her and this song just like brings it out but something about this song the first time i listened to it i was just like what what's happening yeah i don't know maybe i, I don't know if this is the case or not she this song specifically was re- remixed by uh, a guy called named vanek or he goes by the name of Vanek, mm-hmm. so maybe you've heard his remix. I think that remix was fairly successful, so it, it's possible that that got around in your kind of circulation at some point. It could be. I don't know. I've never heard of Vanek. I didn't think I'd heard of <laughs> K-Flay. Honestly, whenever you said you were recommending K-Flay, like, I thought of like KK, the dog from... Animal yeah, Crossing. KK K- Slider. Yeah, I thought of KK K- Slider. Like, I knew that I knew it wasn't. Definitely obviously. wasn't. This, yeah, obviously she's. <laughs> but it's like life as a dog. KK. K- I was like, is this like a first? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she was inspired by Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason she's making music. <laughs> wouldn't that be some shit? But yeah, so so can't sleep. It's got some like this this intro line that's like this fuzzy bass but it sounds like it's kind of being played on a, like a casio keyboard kind of a thing mm-hmm. uh and then it cuts out with some faded keys it's got some snaps in it that kind of give it a nice crisp feel yeah and i don't know i, I really like the the musical profile of this track and it, it kind of like i don't know it ebbs and flows like a lot of her tracks yeah and i like i like the snaps i like the little drum stuff that she kind of does in the background on yeah. this song and several other songs where it's, I don't know. It just adds an extra layer of crispness, like yeah. you said, but it still keeps it feeling nice and loose, which is something I like. I don't like, there's a lot of like hip hop and rap and stuff that I, it took a lot of effort for me to get into because it all felt so like tight. Right. And I couldn't get behind that, but this, I don't know. I like the looseness of how a lot of this stuff feels. Yeah. And to be clear, like she, she, I I classified her as hip hop Mm -hmm. or some kind of weird alternative hip hop thing. She has a lot of like rock influence in her music and a lot of like electronic influence in her music. So it's not for for those who haven't listened to this album, a go listen to it, but it's not like, it's not what you would imagine. It's not where your brain goes when you hear hip hop. It's, it's not just like, a big kind of trappy beat kind of a thing going on. She has a lot of music going on. If that, that sounds offensive to him. <laughs> to have. We've listened to J Cole. He has a ton of music going on, but like, it's not, I, I real know, it, it's, music. not it's not real music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lyrically though, this song is kind of dipping a bit further into the addiction theme, in my opinion, where mm-hmm. it, it's her living her life very fast and loose She's going out and partying every night because consequences be damned. She can't sit still. She, she just has to like cling to this idea that her life will turn out the way it's supposed to. And she's not going to think about it. And she's just going to go and have fun kind of feeding those addictive tendencies that, that were set up in the, in the past track prior track. Yeah. It's definitely like what I got was kind of the struggle between wanting to live your life just completely uninhibited kind of just your way. And you know, you're going to get hurt, but you'd almost rather have it that way than have kind of like the whole thing about, well, I'm just not going to try. Cause if things work out, then that's great. But if I try and fail, it's going to be a lot worse than if I never tried at all. Kind of right. Kind of like that basis behind living your life. So you're just like, fuck it whatever um, yeah one of the lines she's she sings uh i'd rather not give a fuck and end up with some scars yeah and it's like if you do that then there's really shouldn't be any expectations for you and any anything good is just better but then it's like it almost seems like the way she mentions 
my mother told me that the world's got its plans. I want to mm-hmm. hold them till they burn through my hands. It, it kind of makes me think that I don't like kind of that society, like the pressure that she's feeling from society, from her family or something is a big reason as to why she would crack in the way that she does kind of, yeah. kind of like the too high of expectations type thing. And this is probably me putting too much of my own like personal spin on it. And I'm definitely reading pro- too far into it because it's really at, at the surface level, it's about going out and fucking YOLO, whatever, dude, <laughs> I'm, I'm living my life. No, but... I mean, there, there's definitely like, I mean, it, your interpretation of the song is just as valid as anyone else's. I know we, we've talked about this a few times, but like the, the yeah. this album is not hers anymore. Like you said, I think last week or maybe yeah. before once an artist released the album, it's, it's the audiences and it's whatever they get out of it. That matters. Well then, yeah, I take back all my doubts and <laughs> that's what I get out of it. Just cause I know I felt that way. Like you hear a few expectations of yourself or you hear certain people in authority positions in your life telling you that like, Oh, well this is, this is the way it's going to supposed to go. And then that kind of like, is a self-fulfilling prophecy in the opposite direction. Like it's just dooming you to fail because right. of your own like anxieties and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Cause as, as soon as you start to get off track, you're like, wait, this isn't, this isn't going right. What do I do? Panic, panic, panic. <laughs> and then it just gets worse. Oh God, it's all crashing down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, the whole, like my mother told me the world's God's plans. I want to hold them until they burn right through my hands. Kind of to me, gave me the, the feeling that she wanted to, to maintain control of her life. Mm-hmm. And, and that included her going and, and losing control in, in some aspect where she's just like, no, like, this is my life. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I want. And the, the world is going to keep moving. Everything's going to turn out the way it's going to turn out. Might as well have fun doing it. Kind of. A thing. Yeah. Might as well. And, uh, I mean, I know if you don't live your life the way that you want to, you're going to see some other people out there having fun just wishing it was you. And it's then true. you're going to be upset about the fact I, that I've often, not you. I've often seen someone else living living their best life and, and wishing it was me. <laughs> I do that literally every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, track four, wishing it was you. <laughs> Moving right along. We're not getting too real yet. <laughs> Uh, this song is, it's, it's weird. It's hard to say I have a least favorite song on this album that I like so much, but mm-hmm. I, if I had to pick one, I'd say it's this one musically. It, it's got an upright bass sound to it. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually an upright bass, but it sounds like an upright bass. And I really like that bass line in this song. Uh, and it, it's very minimal for the most part musically oh, yeah. until like the last chorus when it's just kind of the soup of sound effects and noise. But yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't really vibe with with this uh song <laughs> musically or lyrically Ah, oh, negative vibe man that's yeah it's a bad vibe get those bad vibes out of here bad vibes i think is uh a song on her newest album <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna confirm that what did you think of this song so like i'm kind of in the same I'm, i think i might have liked it a little bit more than you just yeah. i don't know to be clear, uh, I don't hate it. And yeah. also, to be clear, track number two on her newest album is called Bad Vibes. Well, there we go. Uh, but I kind of like the drum circle-ness yeah. of, of it. There's like just claps and just like a loose drums. And it's just... Very, very clacky. I don't... It, yeah, it's just kind of like... It feels like some people just set up like a drum circle and made the backing sounds for i mean obviously it has like legit structure with like you said the bass the like the bass drum hitting in like there's a lot of like if you have your headphones turned up really loud it kind of feels nice but yeah there's not too much going on and then it kind of all gets like back ended into the last maybe minute or so of the song where there's a lot of like background sounds and voices and whatever it's it's chaotic (laughs) yeah (laughs) But yeah, lyrically, it's pretty straightforward. And and this is kind of the second theme that I mentioned where so like so far we've been talking about her going out and partying, getting drunk, getting high, stuff like that. And this one kind of brings in the whole relationship aspect of it where the whole song is just her saying like she, the, 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 the title for the song comes from the line. She says, I'm sucking on a bottle of Jim Beam, wishing it was you. 
and it, it's just Ooh. about her kind of missing her ex and and yeah. feeling like her she's she's kind of like lonely and, and falling apart in some ways and, and wishes that she had someone to fall back to is it her ex i didn't i knew it was some person but obviously i knew um, it was some person yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it's not explicitly clear. She says, like, you put both your arms around me, said you're glad you found me, but only as a friend. My broken heart is pounding. Maybe I'm just selfish, but baby, I can't help it. So I don't know yeah. if they actually dated or if it was someone that she was interested in dating that, that shot her down yeah. kind of thing. But it, it's a heartbreak song, I guess, at the very yeah. least. A, a very, like, she wanted more, he didn't. Yeah. And now he's living his his best life but his best life doesn't line up with her best life type of deal. Right. And, and that, that heartbreak sets up, I think the next couple tracks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, you see room for personal growth as well at like, not that she needs it. I mean, really whatever, like live your life. Kayflay, <laughs> do, do your yeah. thing. But like the last kind of verse, she's just detailing like, a legit relationship that she wants with this person. Like, yeah. you, so you can obviously, I don't know. It just kind of sets it up. So you can obviously see that like, she's not just, there's a lot of other relationships that are detailed in this album that seem to just be for forgetting things for the pleasure of the moment for like taking her out of a situation to get her mind off of something. And then she details like an actual relationship at the end of this. So like, I don't know. It just adds an element of realness whenever yeah. she talks about, Hey, I've got room in my apartment. Like, if you take out the garbage, I'll pay for the phone. We don't need a wedding. We can just stay home and just talk type stuff. Yeah. Like, and part of me wonders if that's like kind of like the, the bargaining stage yeah. of grief where she's <laughs> yeah. like, look, like, I know you, you don't like me, but, but hear me out. We, we can, we can kind of work on this. Just letting you know, I got room for you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pay for the phone. You just, we'll, we'll each contribute a little bit Man. And, and we'll be happy kind of a thing. I would totally take that deal, by the way. Like, taking out the garbage and somebody <laughs> else pays paying for your phone. That's yeah. a once a week thing. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, paying a phone's only once a month, so they're only having to do something. Yeah, once but a you month. don't have to pay. You don't have to pay anything. She's not saying I have to pay for the garbage service. All I have to do is take <laughs> the garbage out. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Well, also, you have to, you have to be aware, and this isn't super clear in the context of this album. She moved to New York City. So she's in she's in like a, oh. a, a huge apartment complex kind of thing like a don't, skyscraper. Don't they have like trash chutes though? I don't fucking know. You can just like can't you just like throw it down like a what, just throw like it out the window? Chute. It'll land on something. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say some things that probably weren't too nice about New York, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've never there's been garbage there. literally everywhere <laughs> from what I've heard. So <laughs> yeah, I've never been there, and I want to go there. So I would actually. I retract that statement. New York is probably a very clean place. <laughs> Please accept me with open arms whenever I decide to go there. New York. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're going to ban you for saying that there's garbage everywhere. <laughs> New York, I love you, but you're, you're bringing me down. All right, Joey. You, you, song. You're getting crazy now. It sounds like you got some sort of like New York fever going on. I do. In fact, I think I have an actual fever and it's causing me to talk in tongues. Fever. About track number five. <laughs> <laughs> the fever talking about the song Fever, which is track number five. We're, we're oh. doing good. Is this, yeah, I, I go. know last week I said that I got I to gotta keep keep doing this. We, we started strong, and now I'm calling it out, and now it's going to go downhill. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're killing these segues today. I think I think we have – I think K-Flay wrote this album, like at least the song titles, with uh, segues in mind, though. Because it seems yeah, like a lot they're, of them they're very, pretty... very easy concepts to tie into a lot yeah, of things. Definitely. And, not uh, to discredit her songwriting or title yeah. writing. <laughs> and not to just make everything about us. It is, though. It is. I mean, this, this podcast <laughs> is literally just us talking. So That's everything true. that goes on inside of this podcast is just us. Justice. Justice uh, us. But yeah, this song, it's not one. I'm going to go ahead and cut you off before you even guess because this isn't one of the songs. I wasn't going to so, guess. Oh. Man. I think... Hmm. I thought I had an idea. We'll see. We'll see. There, there's two more. There's, there's, there's two more. There's two more. There's two oh, more. that's right, because I guessed wrong. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got to be present of that in the future so that I don't forget by the time those songs come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Fever, it's got kind of like a, 
a rockier start. Yeah. To, to this one has like some electric guitar just kind of jamming out there. And then it gets kind of like wubble, wubby and bubbly kind of oh, yeah. kind of coming in. It's, whoop, 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 whoop. it's, it's, it's fun, <laughs> man. Uh, I, I like the way she raps in this track. She, she kind of like, I don't know. It, it's, it's a credit to all rappers that, that do this and she's not the only one, but when they can change up their rhyme flow to fit, an excess amount of lyrics that that don't necessarily fit the number of syllables kind of a thing where she's just kind of switching it up but never missing a beat and yeah. never sounding out of place even though she's technically changing her rhyme scheme up or or where the syllables are falling kind of a thing there's like specifically in the first verse she has this kind of simple thing going on so so she leads into a saying messages that i'll never get pitfalls of a broken life texted him no supply waiting on shit to level off and then the next line, she just kind of, she fast spits, swear if I spill it, I'll make sure to save it up off the carpet. I plan to be taking off kind of a thing where she, she's just cramming twice as many syllables into the <laughs> line that each of the other lines is. And she doesn't miss a beat and it doesn't sound out of place. I just, I don't know. I really like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty nice to be able to hear people who actually know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> Com- compared to listening to ourselves talk about music. <laughs> but that line in here, like, I got a very, man, I feel bad because I keep relating a lot of things to drugs, but I got a very, like, cocaine vibe yeah. off of this this song. And that exact line that you just said, swear if I spill it, I'll make sure to save it up off the carpet I plan to be taking off, is like yeah. the... The, the line that made me think of that is because it's I had just pictured somebody she's out like partying mm-hmm. or like just like getting ext- like partying the ultimate party where she's never partied before just going all out and she like spills something on the carpet and she's just like pick like with a magnifying glass down there just like <laughs> yeah. oh shit oh shit yeah, I gotta get every last bit yeah I blew all my hundreds of dollars on yeah on so. This. <laughs> So in the chronology of this album, this, uh, in my opinion, is the point where she is no longer the, I mean, I guess she, she's still the person she was, but she's an evolved form of herself. This song specifically to me came off as her coming into fame and fortune Mm -hmm. and having to change her lifestyle kind of drastically to fit that and keep going. But she still has these tendencies like we've been talking about that, to, to be addictive of certain things. Now she's in a new place. She doesn't have any friends. She's finally making money, but she doesn't know what to do with it. So she kind of falls back into addiction and it kind of goes a step further, I think, than what the first half of this album was talking about, where it's mostly like innocent alcohol abuse, <laughs> which yeah. is not a, not, a, not a thing. It's not innocent at all, but yeah. relatively, right? She, yeah. She's coming from like alcohol addiction and maybe like, like you said, you mentioned heroin. Not yeah. that heroin should be brushed off as yeah. innocent. No, yeah. But but she's getting more highball, I guess. Yeah. She has she has more money. She's she's she's, she's getting... continuing her party lifestyle in a bigger way. I yeah. Think. It's yeah. That's kind of what I got. Like I got this 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 was like a turning point story wise on the album where it was like shit's really getting out of hand for her. it's right. Like before, like you mentioned it being innocent and like, I think this song is something that she will reflect on later (laughs) and be like, oh shit, that's like, it's, it's not the same as it was before now. Like the point where you think back on parts of your life where you're like, whenever I did this before, it was, it was fine, but now it's sad. Now it's just like. There's something different about it. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I'm yeah. No. It's too much it's, it's stuff changed. Here. No. I, I think there there's a, a clear change, like you're saying, where previously she had been doing it for fun and she'd been having fun doing it. At this point, it seems like it's more of like the real addiction setting in, and she's not doing it for fun. She's doing it because she feels like she has to. Kind of a thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a bad time. Full of full of bad things, man. It's true, and full of track number six. Bad things. Bad things is the name Boom. of track number six. Boom. <laughs> uh, is this one of your other two tracks? 
Yeah, it actually is. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I'm. I'm You're two, 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 two for two three. Two for yeah. three. Is that yeah. how that works? Sure. We'll, we'll say two for three. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> I really like the the drum pattern in in this track, along with this kind of like modulated piano that gives the main melody and progression to it. Um, mm-hmm. it it's it's again, it's it's a track that's very simple at its core but it gives her a lot of room to flex her kind of rap skill that I I enjoy. Yeah. What I liked about it was I don't, the drum, like the track, the drum track itself was pretty fast, I guess. Like I'm guessing it's not actual drums. I'm guessing it's like, yeah. Yeah. Pro tools or whatever they do. I don't know anything about program drums. Yeah. But so it was, it was like quicker. But then the actual like music, like the piano or synths or whatever in mm-hmm. the background, kind of held its own like slower. Like it, it really was super simple, and yeah. kind of played against how fast the drums were. For sure, and I think this this is the song specifically that ties in those two themes that I've been talking about: the drug use and addiction, and also mm-hmm. the relationship level. So if the first half of the album, right? She, she's kind of, she has, she's developing this addictive personality. And then, like we said, she had this kind of heartbreak on wishing it was you. She moved to a new city. She's getting a little bit of money. She's kind of hitting the, the, the apex of her addiction kind of a thing. Uh, may, maybe not at the lowest point yet. I think that actually comes in the next track, yeah. but kind of building from that, it, it seems like, her money and her fame are giving her connections to harder and better drugs. And she, she's tired of being lonely in a sense. And she, she's kind of finding a new group of friends that maybe isn't the best, the the best group to fall into with these kind of drug habits. And I think she's becoming self-aware in this, but she doesn't know how to, how to stop it. Yeah. Be, like the last lines uh, in each verse, I guess, thought it might be real, but it isn't. My mind goes to the darkest places. I've got so much to love. Sometimes I fucking hate it. Like the yeah, the realizing that like I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like I've got so much to love is like it's the bearing of responsibility that like there are people who you're important to and are important to you in your life and. Yeah making whenever you make all of these crazy decisions for yourself like she's making it 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 becomes more of a liability to have people that you care about or people who care about you rather than a good thing rather than a sport system it's more like they're dragging you down right yeah and this whole song she's kind of like telling those people to fuck off like yeah you can say what you want about me i don't care yeah it's kind of kind of going out and doing my thing and the whole hook the whole like chorus of this thing she says first i felt faded then it got loud next i was wasted then i blacked out not who i seem i mean like i've been doing bad things and it's just like she she's completely aware that she's kind of torching her life yeah but at the same time she she's kind of she's got all this momentum behind her she's got all of this like addictive energy that she that she yeah. has and it's it's just snowballing and it's coming to to a head i think yeah this was at least that sentiment of this song was uh something that i connected with just like being absolute just like shit sometimes yeah and you're just like well fuck i got like three missed calls from people who care about me yeah. And uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to call them back and hopefully they just kind of forget that I exist for a little while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I don't feel like dealing with that shit. Yeah, and this one also kind of drives home the, the kind of cocaine theme that you mentioned. There there's a line where she says everyone's stripped down, coked up, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what that's where I was getting in those themes of like okay, she's clearly like getting involved in a group of people or in a setting of escalating drug use kind of a thing. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, there's going to come a point where she's just going to have to realize that she's done with it. And she's going to have to just say like, I'm out, man. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Maybe, maybe later in this album, yeah, probably not that, the next track. Not now, 
Not now. Not now. <laughs> she, she's good for now. Yeah. But, she, but maybe later she'll be good. Yeah. Maybe later she'll be like, good, good. And now good, she's good. just. Now, now she's, she's bad, good. good. Bad, good. Track seven. I'm, I'm good. good. <laughs> <laughs> this one has like a, a darker feel to the music on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not guessing this one. I, I think I, I'm, I'm going to hold out hope that I know what the last, your, your last one is. I hope you do. Cause I really, I, I think the next one is the next one that I like is probably like my favorite track on the album. So okay. I hope you guess it right. Well, I probably won't, but anyways, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, it it kind of has this darker feel musically on it. I really like the, the kind of pre-chorus flanger guitar kind of thing that mm-hmm. breaks way into the chorus. And the chorus musically is kind of like broken sounding and distorted and echoey kind of thing, which, uh, again, this to me in my narrative of this album is the, the rock bottom for her. This is like, she, she is snowballed out of control. She's fallen in with a group of people that she doesn't need to be with. And specifically in this one, I get the vibe that she's fallen in love with a person that is supplying her and pressuring her into trying all sorts of shit and just going all out. And she, she thinks it's love or he thinks it's love at the very least. Uh, she knows she, she's probably going to end up getting hurt. She acknowledges that at this point and she, she doesn't really care. She doesn't want to come to terms with the fact that she's kind of throwing away all, all of her fame and fortune at this point that she's gotten. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I like, with the sound, at least for the song, it seemed like there were a lot more like, I guess, analog instruments on yeah. this this song, which normally like I, I like that, but in in fitting with the sonic theme of the album, it's just different than the yeah, rest for of, the, sure. of the songs. Which you mean, I mean, again, not, like I, there I, is. I... Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> No, no. You know what? It's <laughs> <laughs> what we get for doing this online, people. Uh, no, it's ahead. fine. No, no, no. Okay. So what I was gonna say is, is that 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 change in tone that that it makes the song stand out. Yeah. I think is because thematically she's hitting this rock bottom. This is the lowest of low. This is kind of like a different ball game, kind of a deal where she's just like, wow, I can't even like. I, I can't keep doing this shit to myself. And I, I think it, it's, it's darker in tone musically and it just kind of gives it this more abstract kind of broken feeling like she's drugged out of her fucking mind. Yeah. And I mean, she's so poor. She can't even like afford digital instruments anymore. She has to actually, <laughs> actually she, play. She sold all of her digital instruments and bought analog ones. <laughs> she mentioned some point about, Oh wait, that comes in a later song. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, yeah. uh, but yeah, it's this, I agree with the rock bottom thing. Like this is pretty much just like, she's almost like cornered and just kind of like doing a bunch of crazy shit. Like, it seems like she's like, I can't think of the exact line and I can't find it right now. And I don't want to be too stupid to interpret it, but it seems like she's actually just like fucking a bunch of dudes or just a dude for drugs or who's yeah. giving her drugs or something. And you know what? If that's your life, do it. Just be safe. But I don't think that's where she wants to be right now. And I think she's realizing that or trying to deny what she knows and is that that's not how she wants to be living her life right now. And just yeah. she's too far in it. She can't see a way out. Yeah. And, and she, she paints this like, explicit picture like she starts off the song saying hopped in the back of a car accepted an offer to go get fucked up in some random bar yeah and so she's like she's just kind of like going with the, the flow of like sure if, you, if you're inviting me to go do drugs sure let's go do that yeah like I don't, I don't got anything to say and then like the second verse uh which may be what you were talking about she says i'm complacent when facing the wall no you want me to want you never took one of those before but i'm not nervous you say i gotta go overboard well it better be worth it kind of a thing yeah like I don't know. And then like best off if I close the door, too many things going to tempt me kind of like it made me, I know she's not speaking. Like she's actually closing a door. Like it's like, she needs to like put some stuff out of her mind. Right. Or like have the, uh, but like I envisioned like somebody in a motel where there's like all these doors and there's like a dude with drugs out there or like, 
just yeah. like just and she's like i gotta close this door because i'm in here right now and i gotta like be, like get rid of this temptation that's kind interesting of. i kind of got the opposite vibe where she's standing on the outside looking in to so so she, she wanted to close off this door metaphorically to to mm-hmm. these people that are influencing her in a negative way where she's kind of having that that self awareness of being like man i re- this is this is way too much i've got to start reeling myself back in i gotta close this door close off this section of my life because it's it's yeah. just gonna keep getting worse it's gonna keep snowballing there's too many things here that you're offering me because you're you're wanting me to try all these different drugs and shit and i i know i'm tempted to do that and i know i have an addictive personality and i need to fucking get away from that <laughs> well you know that probably makes more sense given the arc that continues out of this song yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see where she goes. Maybe she can turn it around. I hope she can turn it around, because I'm, I'm really rooting for her at this point. Good. Track 8, she turns it around. <laughs> what? <laughs> or at least t- talks about turning it around, at the very least. Who would have guessed? <laughs> also, that's the title. Turn it turn around. Turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got a nice, like, deep, spacey feel. It's mm-hmm. so contrasting track 7, where it felt so out of place and, and different musically on this one this one kind of brings it in and softer to or to what we, we were kind of used to in a way where it has some nice deep spacey sense and her voice even sounds a bit more like somber and reflective uh i really enjoy this track a lot i i'm torn between this one and one other song on this album i'm gonna guess is this your third favorite song oh jeremy it's not damn it Okay, I do. So I do really like this song. I'm like, just gonna guess every single track. <laughs> going with the old me approach, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you throw fifty darts, you're bound to hit something eventually. Yep. Something. <laughs> maybe a dartboard. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully a dartboard. Hopefully a dartboard. Hopefully you're at least aiming at a dartboard. <laughs> yeah, not just out in the field somewhere. <laughs> there's Let's okay. See. So there's one thing I do really like about the song, though. There's like some synthy horn types things coming in. On, yeah. Like, I guess it's on the hook of the song. Like, what's a hook? Is that like the chorus? Is that before the chorus? Yeah, that, that's Whatever. how rappers call choruses. <laughs> okay, well, then that thing. But there's like, it's just a sound that I really like. And it's just nice. It sounds like yeah. a synthy horn. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the same thing. I called out, I thought it was interesting, I never noticed until sitting down and, and getting my notes together for this album. Uh, in this song, towards the end, she has a bridge where she sings, Lose my faith, gotta borrow some, we go higher, we go higher. And that melody where she says, we go higher, you can actually hear it throughout the song in a very like muted and distorted and quiet way under underlying everything else. And I never noticed that before. And I thought that was kind of a nice touch. That's pretty cool. I do like that. I wish I would have picked up on that. We'll go back and listen to it. Maybe you'll hear it. You know what? I think I will. And while uh, I'm, I'm, ass- I'm assuming this, this is not, this is too meta for, for this to be a full conversation right now, but I'm assuming you listen to it with headphones on, right? Oh, when, yeah, when, yeah. When we're doing these, we, Okay, just want to make sure we're on the same page there. Why would I listen to music without headphones on? <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, listen to, I listen to music on speakers when I'm not trying to focus on it. Yeah, but is it... I don't know. I couldn't imagine... Yeah, I guess when you're not trying to focus on it. I do play music on my TV sometimes. See, there you go. We're, we're, we're not like, having this conversation. Okay, yeah, I did yeah. not want to derail this. I was just kind of... <laughs> point, point of order. Go back and yeah. listen to the song with headphones on. If you didn't already, listen to it yeah. with headphones on. But uh, yeah, this one is a turning point. I mean, it's called turned around. Mm -hmm. If track seven was her rock bottom, this is her coming to terms with where she is and where she's been and kind of breaking up with her, this drug abusing partner that I painted her to have. She knows she's better than this and she knows she can still turn things around. She knows she has talent and is kind of finally letting things happen instead of hiding and distracting herself from all the shit that's been waiting. She's just kind of letting it like happen. Yeah. And like, it hasn't completely turned around. It's it's a very hopeful song, right? But it's she's not out of the woods yet. To, like really, in the song, she's more yeah, like this, this she's is the hoping point for a better tomorrow. Like, yeah, exactly. She, she's like, man, I am not where I want to be. I'm not where I need to be, and I need to fix that kind of a thing. Yeah. And that's pretty cool because 
I uh, just hope she has a good support system that uh, her and her friends and family are thick as thieves, maybe thicker than dust. Yeah, if, like like the dust of drugs, perhaps. Oh, I was going to think like the dust that is kicked up behind a car when you're driving off into the sunset. Oh, well, track nine is called Thicker Than Dust, so. Well, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> this one, at least musically seems to be the high point of this this transition so if track eight she was turning it around track nine at least musically sounds like she's back to a good point where she's yeah. out of this kind of abusive shitty friend group slash relationship kind of a thing uh i did notice I, I don't know if you called it out but there's a line um let me pull up the lyrics here so i so i don't misquote it she she says fuck living life in an office my eyes no not focusing and she actually like modulates her vocals a little bit when she says not focusing, which I thought was kind of a fun little little uh, Easter egg in her Ooh. thing. Easter egg. Yeah, if, if you can call it an Easter, I mean, it's it's just like it's just like a little change, a subtle change to fit the lyrics that don't necess- it didn't need to happen. Nobody would have noticed if it didn't happen. Yeah. But the fact that it did happen is just kind of like a nice little nice little touch. There's a word for that, and I watched a whole YouTube video about about that exact phenomenon. Then, then you're basically an expert. <laughs> and I can't actually remember what it's called, but yes, I am an expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise, it's an upbeat, happy music and melody kind of a track. I, I didn't have a lot of notes for the music on it. I didn't either, other than it just sounds summery, and not like in the sense that it's like bright yeah. And stuff but like because it's not it's not really like bright but it sounds like something you'd listen to maybe this is why i had the dust behind a car analogy but uh it sounds like something you'd listen to with your group of friends driving somewhere with the windows rolled down when it's nice and like a little bit cool and you're out driving i don't know that's just kind of the vibe i got from it yeah that's interesting i i this is a whole other podcast for sure but I, I tend to relate songs and albums to seasons as well. I didn't with this song specifically, but I did with the next track in, in a very contrasting way. Uh, I, I yeah. like it. And and this one, again, kind of if track eight, she was turning around this one, it seems like the drug abuse was a clearly exaggerated version of her old normal self, quote unquote, normal self. Yeah. And this song is kind of bringing her back up to that normal level where she was at the beginning of the album she's not feeling overwhelmed and being crushed by the weight of her decisions she's got a new lease on life and plans to kind of live it up so she's still kind of partying and having fun but it's not rooted in this denial and tragedy and distraction that it was back at the low point it's almost back to the innocent days right of of, of your of just drinking a whole lot (laughs) yeah there we go that's fine that's socially acceptable that doesn't matter but but also i mean so the 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 title of the track comes from the line in the hook where she says me and my friends thicker than blood just trying to breathe something thicker than dust so she's still smoking yeah something but hopefully it's not cocaine and and hopefully it's not like heroin i hope (laughs) she's not trying to smoke cocaine because she'd be wasting a lot of money (laughs) you you smoke crack yeah you can that's true but then you have to like cook it yeah well we're not we're not talking about drugs i mean we're talking about drugs in the context of this album we're not we don't don't fbi us we we don't make drugs oh yeah i guess that's true don't do that please (laughs) i am we don't actually know how to make drugs yeah i i really don't we have watched television and we are aware of things yeah go fbi those television guys yeah, go FBI the them because FBI is a verb now that we've decided. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what? Even if I did get FBI'd, I'd uh, I'd still set aside some time in my busy, busy schedule to have some time for you. Aw, it's very sweet of you. Also, it's the title for track number ten. <laughs> time for you. <laughs> okay, so this song, this song right here. Yeah. So in in kind of a contrasting way. Uh, to what you said where the last one was very summery this one gave me a very like wintry vibe mm-hmm. it, it's got a lot of like it's a slower ballady song than what's on the rest of the album but it still has some energy behind it 
and there's like an echo that's put on the vocals and the chorus and when mixed with this dragging feel that it, it just kind of it feels like a wintery track to me yeah it definitely like i don't know uh the it starts off with kind of a cool guitar tone kind of like the first song yeah and but one thing that i really 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 like about the song is uh this is the other song Fuck. By the way. <laughs> i was hoping it was the last one damn it <laughs> it's okay. this one uh but there's like a dial tone sound or something that comes in mm-hmm. and i know this is like the dumbest thing to just focus in on but it's just such a it's such a nice little pleasant addition yeah, what, what's what's the term for it joey you're the expert what it's no it's like it's that's just how it is it's like something that's playing in the background as an instrument sounds like it's like a little dial tone like electronic yeah. thing coming in and uh yeah it's i don't know it's just something i like it's it's very slow it's very half timey feel i guess yeah and i i think this is so in in the chronology in the storyline of this album right she's she's come out of this like abusive dark depressive thing she's kind of back to her happy old self but also at this point in time she's she's kind of reflecting a bit and she's like she's demonstrating that she's missing the good parts of being in a relationship but also being smart enough to turn turn that away to turn that down where she 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 wants it to work but she knows this person's not going to change and she can't afford to be around that kind of person anymore due to her own like addictive personality and her own experiences with them yeah because definitely like we i mean it's been a theme in a few other albums that we've talked about but sometimes you can just get it's it is like a drug and whenever you get those huge emotions that come with just the drama and the bullshit and certain relationships it i mean it, good or bad it gives you that hit yeah that you're just like well this is what a relationship is this is like whenever it's good it's fucking great and whenever it's bad it's terrible so you're not gonna feel like that in some boring old relationship so it just makes you want to come back yeah you want to experience the highest of highs even though you'll also be subjected to the lowest of lows kind of a thing but this this seems like she's kind of turning her back on that and she's like look like we we had that time i miss being with you as a person i missed the good parts of it but the bad parts do not make it worth and i know you're not going to change and i can't deal with that so it's better if i just shut you down yeah which is once again good for kayflay good on you good on you kayflay good on you belong belongna whoa <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I can't pronounce that word. Maybe if I keep practicing, I'll, I'll eventually get it right. Maybe you will, and I hope you do. Like track number eleven. <laughs> you, had to, you had to think about that. I one. almost said twelve. I, I was really hoping why. you would, because last week there was a whole debacle where you thought there were more tracks than there were. I was really hoping you <laughs> fucked up again. Well, I almost did. In my infinite <laughs> wisdom, I almost thought there was an extra track that we didn't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were two. There were two bonus tracks on the, the deluxe edition. Get it right. It's track number eleven. Yeah. Uh, it's got some like very light piano stabs. I, I guess you can call them. That reminds me of uh, Kid Cudi's Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah. Which I, I don't think is a, a very stretch of a comparison. Like it sounds very inspired by it, or it's very not. similar. The the snare sound that she uses on this one is very like jangly and loose. Like she's just banging some sheet metal together or some mm-hmm. like metal racks or something, which I thought was kind of an interesting texture to add to this album. Yeah. And it's the time signature, I guess kind of the feel of the drums. Yeah. It gets, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard it, but like the kind of drunk feel where mm-hmm. you're playing kind of off, off time, but it's all technically right. Right. You're just repeating it and it's just part of it, but it kind of like, gives it a feeling of like that second lick, like the hit kind of feels poly, a little poly, off. Polyrhythms. Polyrhythms. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Polymeter. Polymeter. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of gets that feel. And I don't, I know that's a big thing now and it right. has been for a little bit. I don't know if it was around the time of this, but it's just, I don't know. It's a sound that I do really like. And I listen to a lot of 
music that kind of has that feel. So that yeah, aspect it, of this, I really do like. In, in kind of a, an, a contrast to what we've been saying throughout a lot of this album, it kind of gives it a little bit more complexity and a yeah. little bit more like girth to the core. Girth. Nice. Girth. I don't know. That, that sounds weird to refer to music have, having girth, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, some that's girthy it. music, girl. Yes, girl, that, <laughs> that track is thick AF. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so lyrically, this is the happy or at least less sad ending to to this leg of her journey, where she's kind of reflecting and making a ton of realizations about what she wants from life and why she's been acting the way she is. And this is also, I think the first track to directly mention her father, Mm -hmm. which has been a, been a huge influence on her songwriting for her entire career. Uh, He died when she was really young and uh, she, she talks about wanting to make him proud and wanting to change the world and, and be happy and to help people despite kind of feeling this urge to, to fall back on her, her habits that the same habits that presumably killed her dad. Yeah. Uh, she kind of wants to settle down and and make something good out of her life, even though it's going to take a while. Yeah, this was definitely, like, lyrically, it was an intense song. Just, I don't especially because I didn't know anything, like, whenever I was listening to it, I wasn't looking looking through the, the lyrics on anywhere or anything, and I just heard something about telling her father to be strong, and I was like, oh, maybe, like, left when she was young or something. Yeah. But nope, the dude... Just he unfortunately, fell, he fell into the same habits that she's in, and luckily yeah, and, she got it's out. Kinda but... like, it kind of gives context onto who she is at the beginning of this album, yeah. where she she has that kind of addictive slash depressive thing where she's just looking for highs, trying to deal with the fact that she lost her father. Granted, she lost her father, I think, pretty young, and this obviously she wasn't that young when yeah. she wrote this album. But uh, it, it's it's something that seeps through a lot. And she's she mentioned him indirectly in an earlier track, I think, or maybe a couple earlier tracks um, as just like a mysterious him kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's like she, she learned those habits from her father, unfortunately. She still loves her father yeah. very much, but is recognizing that like that's, that's not the way that she wants to live because of what happened to him, maybe. And it seems like she is getting it right now if uh, she's made it so big. If that, yeah. that one year glow up was. Uh, yeah, really and Grant, I, I, I feel like it wasn't actually like she blew up overnight kind of a thing, like yeah. I made it seem. It's just, which makes it weirder to me that it, it was more surprising to me that she was playing in such a small venue and then the next year playing arena tours, whereas in my mind, it seemed like she'd be somewhere between those two places when I saw her both times. Well, maybe she just likes playing really small venues because yeah, cool those that. are, those are some of the best places to see bands. Yeah, I agree. It, it was, it was very nice being, being up close and she, she hung around after the concert. Not that this is relevant at all, <laughs> but I, I got to meet her, took a picture uh, of someone else with her. I went up with uh, our, our friend, that I will tell you the name of afterwards because I do not have her permission to out her on this because I didn't think I'd be talking about it. But yeah, so I went up there with someone. We got we got a picture. She was cool yeah. as fuck. Well, hell yeah, rock on, man. Rock on. How do you K-Flight. feel? How do you feel overall about this album? I think we've covered most of it. Well, overall, I'd say I feel pretty good. I don't know what's. I don't know why I was about to say, I don't know what score I'd give it out of 10, but I really don't need <laughs> we to don't, give it a score. Yeah, we don't, we don't do, do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a good reason that I, I don't do that, but we can talk about that when we, when we yeah. inevitably uh, keep saying, do do kind of a breakdown episode. That's going to be like a 50 hour episode, man. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll make a series. Yeah. But I, I do like the album and I'm definitely going to check out, what was the... Whatever her second album is, the one that you said, everything, uh, everywhere, somewhere, everywhere, somewhere. Yeah, I'd recommend but, it. I'm not too crazy about her newest album. It came out in 2019. It's mm-hmm. got some hits, but uh, I would definitely recommend Everywhere Somewhere. It's kind of a fun, fun thing. Um, and it, it, it is a logical progression musically. Whereas, like this was her first studio album. Now she has the budget and she has the experience to make what she wanted to make. I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I really think that her second album is like peak K-Flay. 
no offense to her. I mean, she has an audience for her new albums, obviously, but I, I just feel like her last album will kind of miss the mark with me personally. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll hear this podcast and she'll make <laughs> another album more in the style of Everywhere Somewhere. Maybe. I'd honestly be down for another album in the style of Life is a Dog because, again, this is Life is a Dog is my favorite album by her. However, I think Everywhere Somewhere is her best album, if that makes sense. That completely makes sense. Cool. People At least sometimes get those mixed up. <laughs> so just, <laughs> just to be clear, I, I think Everywhere Somewhere is uh, a technically superior album. Mm-hmm. It, it has more polish on it. It makes it sound better, which is weird for me because normally I tend to like the more polished stuff. But Life, Life is a Dog, it's just got... It has some songs on this track like "Get It Right" and "Turn It Around" and "Can't Sleep" that just kind of like punch me in my soul when I'm when I'm in yeah. the right mood, and that's kind of what I like about music is having those kind of not not specifically sad boy songs on this album, but songs that really like reach out and grab you, kind of a thing. Yeah, whenever somebody else can make you make you feel a certain way, like yeah, I mean, especially because like I mentioned towards the beginning of the episode, I don't relate to a lot of this album like i've never struggled with drug abuse and i've never struggled with having to make a big move and and deal with the pressure and the stuff that all that in, in includes but i i still feel for her i feel the kind of tragedy and and the the perseverance through through that kind of a thing which yeah i don't know it's, it's a nice feeling well how nice how empathetic of you <laughs> I'm a very empathetic person. That's like my best quality. That's, that's not at all. That's, that's a very unhumble thing to say. But it is what a good, we, emp- empathy's a great quality. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone should be empathetic, but I, I'm not claiming to have that ability. Okay. To, to what are we do, What are we listening to this week, Joey? This week we're listening to the Two Bears and their. I think it's their first like legit album. Be strong. Not not B, yeah, not B like the letter B or like the buzzy the, the buzz, B. buzzy B. It's like be strong, like hey you be strong. Yeah, it's not like beast, be strong. No, it's beast, be yeah. strong. The beast would be right if it was telling you to be strong. <laughs> is the beast the bear? The, the, the two bears. Is, the beast is the bear. The beast are the two bears. <laughs> We're talking about the, t- the two bears. Would be strong. You've heard be us strong. say it twenty five times. I don't know why I felt the need to clarify. <laughs> well, some people might just be like, maybe if if you're doing that thing where you just kind of like skip through a podcast yeah. or something, you're like, oh, well, let me just get to the end so they can tell me the thing. And that way, they <laughs> yeah, if you're listen. doing that, why? Like, this is not the podcast to do that on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's no, there's no grand payoff at the end of our podcast. <laughs> Unless we get like actual viewership and somebody just like really hates an album and they're that's like, that's true. They just want to see what's coming next. Yeah. Although then they could just like, I don't know. I guess there's, we don't tell anybody what we're listening to until the podcast. Right, until it's already out. Yeah. Well, until the end of the prior episode, which yeah. they would have to skip to or until it's already out, but it no matter. Maybe that's an oversight. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we can, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll think about tweeting it out. Maybe while yeah. we're listening to it. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Me either, man. But if you guys wanna wanna contact us, please do so. Yeah. We're on all the social medias. We're on, we're everywhere, man. If you if you if we're not on a platform, you want us to be on, hit me up personally. You you know me. I know yeah. you. You probably don't know me. Or you, you might, might, you know, might know of Joey. Me. You might probably know, me. know of Joey. Like, I, f- I feel like a large, a, an extremely vast majority of my friends are aware of you because. Yeah the fact that we have this podcast <laughs> talked about this podcast. They're at least so. aware of my existence. So, yeah. but I don't know why they would be contacting me over you, but you know, if you feel like <laughs> it, just do it. Fine. Yeah. If you, if you really want to talk to Joey, ask me, I'll give you Joey's number <laughs> and you can text him and we'll figure it out. Or you can just tweet us. We're on yeah. the tweeters, the Facebooks, the Instagrams. We're, we're social media people. And by we, I mean, Joey is now because he's kind of, I'm the guy now, apparently. He's manning that stuff for now. That's because I have so much downtime. <laughs> yup. And so do I. I just don't like doing it. So, <laughs> whatever. Uh, this is this has been fun. This is a fun yeah. episode. 
but uh and and we're, we're gonna end it because we're over our time slot we've been we're slowly writing our time slots back in yeah of course now that i'm calling it out we're talking more about it so it's just taking the episode longer so we're just gonna fucking end it uh listen to the album be strong by the two bears we'll be discussing it next week until then stay in our feedback later.